Hey everybody, I'm Craig Harper with the University of Tennessee. I get lots of questions about wild turkeys, and in particular about wild turkey habitat. Well, it's mid-June, the nesting season is winding down, and over the past several weeks, lots of folks have been asking about nesting cover. What is it? What does it look like? Which vegetation types are turkeys selecting to nest in? And what does the vegetation around the nest look like? Well, in the scientific literature, we know that wild turkeys nest in a wide variety of vegetation types and that the vegetation surrounding the nest can vary considerably. Dave Bueller and I at the University of Tennessee have conducted a study investigating wild turkey ecology and management in five counties of South Middle Tennessee since 2017. We've had four graduate students work on the project and we've monitored hundreds of nests. Previously this spring, I spent some time in the field with the graduate students and we visited lots of nest sites. We took some video and I thought you might like to see which vegetation types they're selecting and what the vegetation around the nest look like and a little bit about nest success. Right now, we're in a three-year-old loblolly pine stand that was planted in the spring of 2020. And Lindsay's gonna give us a little background information on this site and what the turkeys have done here, how they have responded, because she's been tracking birds on and around this area since 2019. As you can see, we're standing in what would be described as an early successional vegetation community. It's dominated by perennials such as blackberry, broom sedge, trailing lespedeza, goldenrod, wing stem, lots of perennial vegetation, but now it's giving way, of course, to the planted pines, as you see here. This happens quickly, very quickly, once you have full sunlight coming onto the ground, not only the vegetation composition, but of course the structure as well. So Lindsay, tell us a little bit about how you have seen the structural changes take place on this site and how turkey use has changed along the way with that. Certainly, so when I was working on this site in 2019, this was a complete closed canopy uh, planted loblolly pine plantation. Um, so we didn't really see any sort of nesting response from our turkeys using this area. Um, really didn't see any use of the birds in general either, just in terms of movement through the stands. So closed canopy, it was very open underneath. Extremely open, yes. And did you, this is a 219 acre stand. Did y'all have any turkeys nest in the stand during 2017, which was a couple of years prior to you being here, and in 2019 or 20? No, we did not. Um, we did start seeing a response out of our birds though in 2021. So two years after that harvest, we did see some birds start to move over here. And since 2021, we've had 15 different birds actually nest in this stand. That's outstanding. Uh, obviously a response to the different structure that is available. Here we had an actual nest site from this year. And Joe, why don't you tell us a little bit about the structural characteristics that you measure at the nest sites. Yeah, so one thing we generally see with our nests uh, in, uh, in our study is that they have a backstop. So in this nest, she chose a stump from one of the loblolly pines that was logged here in 2019. And then the next thing we notice is that there's a lot of uh, horizontal and overhead uh, concealment. So this is provided by dense native vegetation in this nest, like devil's walking stick here and blackberry. And if we even look, we can see that this was a successful nest here by this egg where the top is popped off and the rest of the egg is whole. Uh, and we are now monitoring her brood about 500 yards away. So Casey, you monitored this hen after the eggs hatched. What did she do? So after this nest hatched about three days ago, she took her poult southeast and moved out of this early successional stand and into a deciduous forest and is slowly making her way down towards a field. This cover is great for nesting. It's not very good for poults to move through. It's very thick at ground level. So she took those poults into an area where they could be much more mobile. That makes sense to me. Why don't we go take a look? Sounds good. So we've just stepped into the woods adjacent to the cut where the hen nested. Closed canopy, mixed deciduous hardwoods, open underneath, very, very poor brooding cover. I would not describe this as brooding cover at, at all. But as Casey mentioned, the hen has moved the brood through these woods and is headed to a field complex that is about 500 yards away. So the question is, 
why force a hen to move her young brood 500 yards or more away to get to good brooding cover? Better management would juxtapose good brooding cover with good nesting cover to minimize the movements a hen would have to make with a young brood, such as this one, which is in its third day. We're standing at another nest site, and you can see this one is indicative of old field vegetation. It's a lot of perennial vegetation that provides kind of a, a wall around the nest. Obviously, we've walked in here so you could see where the nest bowl is, but it is surrounded by vegetation that is about four feet tall, whether box elder and grape and wing stem and goldenrod. There's honeysuckle in here, just typical stuff that you would find in an old field setting, nothing specific or magic. There's even multiflora rose in here. So some native, some non-native, obviously the, the box elder providing some overhead structure. We're actually standing in a gas line right of way, again, indicative of what you would find in old field vegetation. But this type of structure is what has been selected so frequently by wild turkeys in, in our study. Your management may favor this type of structure over clean, green, and even. Let some things grow up and get through the nesting season. Also for other species, whether songbirds, rabbits, fawn, deer, etc., deer forage through the summertime, change your management to allow this to exist on your property. Have it patchy in distribution and it'll make a difference. We've just walked into another nest site and you can see that this one is in a completely different vegetation type than what we were in earlier. Now we're in a closed canopy, mature, mixed hardwood stand, very open underneath, very little mid uh, understory, a sparse midstory, and here is the nest. You can see that there is no surrounding cover uh, in terms of vegetation concealing the nest, yet the nest is against a large structure, this black oak, which is very, very typical and consistent. Relatively little overhead cover from this beech branch uh, as compared to some other nest, but this is a perfect illustration of how vegetation characteristics around wild turkey nest sites can vary considerably. Now, interestingly, 38% of the landscape in this area is comprised of mature closed canopy deciduous forest. And 35% of the wild turkey nests that we have monitored during the course of the study has been in this vegetation type, which is what you would expect in terms of use and availability. They are using this veg vegetation type in proportion to the amount that they have it on the landscape. In contrast, early successional vegetation communities and shrubby type vegetation communities represent only 7% of the landscape, yet 46% of our nest have been in those vegetation types. And we're talking about to date 647 nests. It's not uncommon to see wild turkey nests in hay fields and pastures. And the landscape surrounding our study sites 34% of the landscape is in hay or pasture. And we have seen 5% of our turkey nest in pasture and 4% in hay field. Unfortunately, the success of those nests is low. Only 7% success of nest in hay field. There was a nest right here last year. It was not successful because the landowner destroyed it by hay in the field and pastures We've monitored or calculated 18% nest success in pastures. When you compare that to deciduous and pine or cedar forest, anywhere from 20 to 30% compared to early succession, nest success has averaged 36%. So we've talked a lot about how you can find turkey nest in a wide range of vegetation types and with very variable structure. However, there are limits. And right here, we're standing in the middle of a relatively closely grazed cattle pasture. And you can see how there is no structure for nesting here. So don't expect turkeys to nest just anywhere. There has to be some type of vegetation to provide concealment for the nest. 
I mentioned that 46% of our nest, out of 647 nest, 46% of them have been in early succession or shrubby vegetation types. Of all of those that were in any vegetation type, including hayfield, pasture, row crops, food plots, early succession, etc., that could be mowed, 12% of our nests were destroyed by mowing. That's significant. Simply by changing your mowing practice such that it is outside of the nesting season, you can increase your nest success potentially by 10% or more. We're standing in one of the fields of one of the landowners that has allowed us to uh, conduct the, the study on his property as well as many, many others that we've involved. But this one has been in the project for seven years. And Lindsay's gonna tell us a story about how this landowner has changed his mowing practices because of what we have found. And also tell you a little bit more, an anecdotal story about the effect of mowing, at least on one individual hen, which is really interesting. We had a hen, she started an initial nest attempt. It was destroyed by mowing. She re-nested, destroyed by mowing. Re-nested again, destroyed by mowing all within the same year. Wow. So you can easily see there how mowing can have an impact. In this field, uh, we had a hen the first year of the study. Uh, we monitored her nest. She did nest in this area, monitored nest. She successfully hatched, but within a week of her brood being out in this field, this landowner came through and mowed this field. Well, that pushed the hen to have to take her brood nearly two miles away, and that brood did not survive. Next year, she did the exact same thing. Nested here, the landowner mowed, she had to take her brood elsewhere, brood did not survive. In the third year, this landowner decided to, de to delay mowing. Because you told him about this. We did. And so he delayed his mowing practices. The hen nested here again, successfully hatched that nest, used this field, and she successfully raised that brood into the fall population. Wow, not just in this field, but in this area. Yes, in this area. Um, and it should be added to that hen we caught her, like I said, in the first year of the study as an adult, and she is still on air today, and she is at a minimum eight years old, and wow. she is still producing pulse for us today. Adult hens matter. I think Coulter Chitwood and others published a paper not long ago yeah. that uh, adult hen survival was one of the most important factors related to fecundity and recruitment into the fall population. Here we're in a field of dense planted native warm season grass. This field has been enrolled in CRP, but the term CRP is fairly ambiguous unless you identify which species of plants you have. And so looking at a field of native grass such as this, structurally, it's really not much different than an ordinary hay field, even with non-native perennial cool season grasses that is not hayed. And so, Certainly you may see wild turkey hens nest out here, and those nests then stand a much greater chance of being successful if the field is not mowed or hayed. However, there's not a whole lot of value in such fields beyond nesting cover because plant diversity is so low. It's, I can hardly find four species of plants out here other than the big blue stem, the Indian grass, and little blue stem that was planted. And once the broods come out of the nest, it's, it's very difficult for navigation in such cover. When we see hens nesting in planted native warm season grass, it's usually at the edge adjacent to some uh, sprouting trees, brambles or shrub cover, as you see over here with the sumac and the wild plum. And there's uh, a few tree species coming up along this little drainage that, that's uh, jutting into the field. That's the type of structure that we typically see hens selecting within a field that is essentially dominated by, by dense grass. This one is a perfect example of early succession giving way to regenerating trees. We wanted to show you this because this is the type of structure that we're typically seeing hens select for nesting when they have it available to them. This is also the type of structure in which we are measuring the greatest nest success, better than most of the forest types and certainly greater than pastures, hay fields, and row crops. We have a hen that is nesting down here about 100 to 150 yards, and this is the second year in a row that she's nested in this field. 
Although this type of structure is great for nesting, it's not for brooding. The structure is too dense at ground level to allow poult mobility, and hens with broods typically will only use the edges of such fields. To provide better brooding cover, your management should provide better openness at ground level and a structure that still allows hens good visibility. Here we're in a bottomland woods that was thinned out several years ago and still we have at least 30, in some places 50% sunlight coming in. There's box elder, elm, walnut, hackberry species that are typical to a site like this. We're right along the Buffalo River. Last year we had a nest right here and this is one of the, the classic, classic sites in terms of structure where we see nests typically placed. There's large debris right here where the nest was against. There's overhead cover with the box elder limbs. There's iron weed, jewel weed, smart weed. Uh, most of these grasses are rough stalk bluegrass, um, spice bush. You see lots of concealment around the nest, overhead cover, visibility at the height of the hen is no more than maybe 30 feet. This really typifies areas where we've seen most of the nest. This is not what you would call an early successional community, but it is more characteristic of what we would call a woodland where, we're have, where we have somewhere between 30 and 70% uh, sunlight coming into the stand and an understory that is dominated by herbaceous species. These areas right here are outstanding for wild turkey and other species, not only for nesting, but for brooding as well. Well, I think you can see how wild turkeys in South Middle Tennessee nest in a wide variety of vegetation types and how the vegetation around the nest may vary considerably. However, I also hope you noticed how there are consistencies and how concealment cover is very important with regard to wild turkey nest site selectivity and also with regard to nest success. Hopefully this information will help you as you manage your property for turkeys.